just like him, have put us in a place where some of us have been sexually exploited. We have sisters who go and shake their butts on the stage in order to make a little bit of money because I don't need no man. I can make it all on myself. So there's this sense of individualism and a place where women are using their bodies in order to get what they feel like they need to get from this system. And it's also reproductive control. Poverty leads to reproductive control of women. And we're talking about, especially with regards to APDEP and Infant and Maternal Health Project, when we're speaking about, you know, one in eight over a lifetime of women who die in childbirth. This is not, again, this is not, and in, 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 I feel like I made that mistake too, and I had some brothers in the, in the party correct me. This is not a women's issue. It is an issue of African people. When you have, like I said earlier, when you have women who are dying at rates, people who are dying at rapes, women who are dying at these rapes, it should be an issue that we all take up. And our reproductive ability is being controlled through drugs, it's being controlled through poverty, it's being controlled through uh, uh, environmental warfare, all of these things. And our access and lack of access to, ch to, um, to medical facilities and medicines is also an issue too. So, and also, um, one of the, the key things, as I feel it, is um, the identity of African women. Um, our identity has been wrapped up in the identity of in women in general. African women who are speaking out about injustices that are happening to African people and African women are constantly being placed in the category of your feminists, which most people don't really understand. African women have always had the respect of our families, like I said before. And I have to admit that in my own struggle, to not sound like a feminist or putting African women on a pedestal above the overall African struggle for freedom. There was a fear that to speak out against these things about Af uh, that affect African or black women in general, oh, okay, I think that's where I was all, I need to fix this part because <laughs> it's going around in a circle. But as far as the identity of African women, I think that there's a struggle that's being made with African women because for far too long, our identity has been likened or perceived to uh, be compared to that lily white perception of white women. You know, we were being told to, see, to be seen and not heard. We've had our men say, you, you too bossy. You got to snap your neck back in and all that stuff. And we're too angry. It's okay to, um, for men to express their rage and be supportive. But when we have a way of expressing rage, we're told that we need to feminize ourselves. We are told that we are too, we are too bossy. We need to be more like them. And I've heard that on many occasions. And I don't know what's wrong with you black women. I'll be mad too. I'm mad. I'm mad. A lot of women are mad. Mad. Why can't we just say why we mad? Instead of saying that's that mad black woman over there and being classified as that is all the time. Look at what we have to go through. And our identity as black women has been assaulted. I mean, it's just, we're just being attacked. And not just in that way. I mean, we have our physical appearance, our aesthetics is not good enough. If you don't look a certain way, if you don't talk a certain way, if your skin not light enough, or if your eyes are not light enough, your hair ain't straight enough, or if you don't speak, it's, it's ridiculous. And, we, and it's not just coming from outside of us. It's not the media assault on us. It's our own people, too. Not just the men, but the women, too. Your family around you is telling you ain't going to get no man if you don't look like this, if you don't speak like this, if, you don't, if you're not shaped like this. And it's an assault always on African women's identity on how we should be perceived and how we should be seen and not heard. So it's always about our appearance and always about how we can be the most... Uh, appealing to men in general. And so the prevailing idea, the prevailing aesthetic of African women is to look like and more like European women. Always. It's been coming, we've been coming out of that, but pretty much growing up, that's how it's been presented. So what we can do, and one of my biggest things is that I think that we need to, how we can resolve this and really fight this oppression is really increase our ability to speak to other African women. I think we need to be able to increase African women's political understanding of how we connect to everything that's happening in the world. I think that we have <clears throat> the platform here with the party on their stance on African women, which I read a little bit about that earlier. And I think that we need to be able to utilize that to, get, to bring to the masses of African people and African women a political understanding of how we are being used not just African people, but as African women to harm the whole thing. 
and how we can overturn that struggle and how we don't need to be antagonistically, you know, fighting each other. We need to be able to just decipher 